The fifth pillar of Islam is Hajj, which translates to mean the pilgrimage to the holy city of Mecca. The Arabic word Hajj linguistically means heading to a place for the sake of visiting. In Islamic terminology, it describes the act of heading to Mecca to observe specific acts and rituals. Hajj, or the pilgrimage, is a five to six day journey to the sacred place between the eighth and the thirteenth day of the last month of the Islamic lunar calendar, Dhul Hajjah. The Hajj journey is obligatory for every Muslim, male or female, to complete at least once in a lifetime, providing that they are mentally, physically, and financially capable of making the trip. God states, and due to Allah from the people is pilgrimage to the house for whoever is able to find their two away. The Hajj includes detailed reenactments of certain symbolic rituals performed by great prophets and righteous individuals in the past. The Hajj pilgrimage and its symbolic rituals commemorate the legacy of Prophet Abraham. So one needs to learn about Prophet Abraham to understand the reasoning behind certain acts performed as part of Hajj. Integral to Hajj is the Kaaba, a holy shrine, a black silk-clad cube stone structure at the heart of the Grand Mosque in the modern-day city of Mecca, Saudi Arabia. The Kaaba is at the center of the earth, built by Prophet Abraham and his son Ishmael. Upon completion, God the Almighty commanded Prophet Abraham to relay the message amongst the people that they would be required to make a pilgrimage to this house. Prophet Abraham then replied, O oh Allah, with no one here, how will they hear my message? God then replied, Upon you is the proclamation, and upon me is to see who responds. Prophet Abraham went on top of the Kaaba and also climbed Mount Safa and called out, O oh people, Allah has built a house for himself on this earth, and he has legislated upon you that you go and perform pilgrimage. So come and perform pilgrimage to this house. By performing Hajj, Muslims are answering the command of Allah. More than 4,000 years later, to this very day, millions upon millions of Muslims continue to answer the call of Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him, from every corner of the globe. You will find Muslims from Africa, Asia, Europe, Australia, and all over the world making this pilgrimage every year. It is the largest annual convention of faith on earth, where Muslims gather to commemorate the rituals observed by Prophet Abraham and his son Ishmael. Muslims celebrate the legacy of Prophet Abraham and the many sacrifices he has made for the sake of Allah. When Muslims enter the sacred Meccan territory during Hajj, they bathe themselves and enter into a ritual purified state called the Haram. In this state, pilgrims are forbidden to perform normal actions that are otherwise permissible, such as covering one's head for males, clipping their fingernails, cutting their hair, hunting animals, picking plants, shedding blood, engaging in sexual activity, and wearing normal clothing for men. Male pilgrims wear two white seamless lion sheets with no stitching by hand that are wrapped around the body. No belts, no rings, no perfumes, no jewelry, or any type of accessories or garish clothing may be worn. The simple garb worn represents complete impoverishment and humility and signifies the equality of humanity as everyone comes before God the same. No one is better than the other amongst the pilgrims of Hajj. Muslims are all united in their devotion to God. Every human being is displayed equally as we are all equal in the eyes of Allah, regardless of our color or race. The black man stands next to the white man and they call on Allah with one voice. The king stands beside a peasant the businessman stands beside the politician, the doctor beside the engineer, and they declare their submission to the will of Allah using the same words. Several millions of people are dressed the same way and look the same. No one can tell the rich from the poor. All fulfill the same rituals with the utmost humility. This is to remind pilgrims of the upcoming day of judgment, when all people will be stripped of their clothes and displayed before their God. The pilgrims display a sense of poverty with their appearance, as pilgrims acknowledge that they are the ones in need, and God is the one that owns and has everything they require. Pilgrims start to perform their tawaf from the black stone corner. Tawaf is the act of circulating the Kaaba counterclockwise. Pilgrims circumambulate the Kaaba seven times while they recite prayers during every circuit. 
pilgrims performed a tawaf to follow the suit of the Prophet, peace be upon him, as has been ordained in the Quran. Certain scholars state that the circumambulation of the Kaaba symbolizes the oneness of God and the fact that all human actions must claim God at their center. As pilgrims circulate the Kaaba, they disconnect themselves from worldly attachments and focus upon the presence of the Divine. As pilgrims circumambulate the Kaaba, they chant, Here I am, O Allah, here I am. You have no partner. Indeed, all praise, favor, and dominion belongs to you. You have no partner. Since Prophet Abraham and his wife, Sarah, were not able to bear any children, Sara asked her husband to marry their servant so they could beget a child before they were too old to raise the offspring. Later, Prophet Abraham was commanded by God to take both his second wife Haggad and their son Ishmael and leave them in a barren desert valley in modern day Mecca. As soon as Abraham started to leave, Haggad cried out, Where are you going? Why are you leaving us? Abraham did not respond. After a few more attempts to find answers, Haggad then asked if this action was commanded from God. He responded, yes. Then she replied, if God commanded you to leave us, then leave us, because God will never leave us to perish. She was certain that God would not abandon her and her child, despite their presence at the center of a desert valley. He left them with little water and some dates. Later, Haggad ran out of food and water and started to worry for her child. She then fell into a state of anxiety and climbed the hillock called Mount Safa, crying out, Is anyone there? Then she ran into another hillock, Mount Marwa, again crying out, Is anyone there? Then she commenced pacing back and forth to each mountain seven times. On the seventh round, Haggard saw Angel Gabriel descend from the sky and strike the ground with his wing, causing water to gush upward from the ground. Angel Gabriel declared Zem Zem, meaning stop, stop, commanding the water to stop. This water is now referred to as Zem Zem water. This well till today nourishes pilgrims of Mecca every day. Haggad and her child, for their part, were rescued by passerby. Years later, when Ishmael was growing to become a man, his father, Prophet Abraham, returned and built with him the house in Mecca called the Kaaba. In commemoration of this great sacrifice from Haggad, Muslim pilgrims in Hajj progress in a quicker pace going back and forth between the two hillocks, which are 300 to 400 yards apart, seven times, reenacting Haggad's movements when attempting to find aid. This action is symbolic of Haggad's search for water and the miracle of the well of Zamzam. Then the pilgrims depart Mecca toward the Valley of Mina, which is about three to four miles outside of Mecca. During Hajj season, Mina is full of more than 100,000 air-conditioned tents that cover every open space as far as the eye can see, row after row, where pilgrims stay overnight. The tents accommodate roughly 2-3 to three million people before the Hajj. Pilgrims spend their night in prayer, worship, and meditation, asking for forgiveness on the night known as Laylat al-Tashriq. After spending the night at the village of Mina, Pilgrims take the next step and proceed to a huge plain about 7 to 8 miles from Mecca called Arafah, a huge plain surrounded by bare mountains. Forming the center is a hill known as Mount Mercy, Gabal al Rahma, where Prophet Muhammad delivered his memorable farewell sermon. This is the center right of the entire Hajj. Pilgrims stand from noon to sunset praying quietly before God, begging for mercy and forgiveness and asking for their wishes. Many pilgrims shed tears as they ask the Almighty to forgive them for their sins in this very emotional day of standing. The process of standing, reflecting, taking account for their actions, and begging and pleading to God is often thought of as a preview and representation of the great assembly of the upcoming day of judgment. It is to remind people of the inevitable day where everyone will stand before their God begging for mercy. Then pilgrims spend the night at Muzdalifa an open plain about halfway between Arafah and Mina, where pilgrims pray and go back to Mina. At the age of 95, Prophet Abraham saw himself slaughtering his son in a dream. Interpreting the vision to mean that he needs to slaughter his son for the sake of God, he was to lay his son onto the sand and raise a knife to sacrifice him. Of course, Islam doesn't allow this act. The dream was only a way for God to test Prophet Abraham. But Prophet Abraham didn't know that this was only a test to see who he loved and devoted to the most, his Lord or his son. 
Ishmael was his only progeny at the time. His son looked at his father and said, If God commanded you to do this, do as you were commanded, as I too am submissive to God. As Prophet Abraham raised his sword, Satan appeared in front of him and stated, That's your only son. What are you doing? How can you kill him? Prophet Abraham, recognizing Satan the cursed, started to pelt him with seven stones until he went away. After that, Abraham moved to another place, where Satan once again returned and was pelted again by Prophet Abraham. Then again, the action was repeated in another place. Satan always tries to separate people from their Lord. Eventually, when Abraham was poised to kill his own son, his son was replaced with a ram sent by God. Prophet Abraham immediately realized that this was only a test from the Almighty. At Mina, pilgrims participate in a ritual called the Rami which is the throwing of seven stones at three monuments called the Jamarat. Until today, millions of Muslims passed by three monuments and throw pebbles as a ritual, which symbolizes the reenactment of the actions of Prophet Abraham when he was faced with the trial of sacrificing his son. The three monuments or pillars in Mina represent the three places that the devil tempted Prophet Abraham to forgo the sacrifice. The throwing of the pebbles is purely symbolic. To this day, at the end of Hajj, Muslims annually sacrifice sheep, cows, camels, and goats in the millions, commemorating the spirit of Abraham, his intention, his sincerity, and his passion, the meat from the sacrifices given to charity. During Hajj, Muslims also kiss a black stone, symbolizing their appreciation of them being invited to the house of the King of all kings, our Lord, our Creator. Muslims also kiss the black stone in tradition of Prophet Muhammad. If they cannot kiss it, they can touch it or point in its direction. This stone was sent down from heaven for Abraham to be used for the construction of the sacred house. The stone was sent down from heaven for Abraham to be used for the construction of the sacred house. Buildings in ancient times often had cornerstones, and Prophet Abraham wanted a cornerstone for this house. Narration described the stone as being whiter than milk, in origin, darkening slowly from the sins of humans while it morphed into a black stone. The black stone is the starting point for Tawaf, the circling of the Kaaba. Hajj is completed by the act of men either shaving their heads or clipping their hair, and women cutting off a fingertip's length of their hair to mark their partial deconsecration, a symbol of humility. Apart from Hajj, a minor pilgrimage known as Umrah is performed in the remainder of the year. The completion of Umrah does not fulfill the obligation of Hajj. Umrah is much shorter in length, lasting a few hours, which entail the seven circumambulations of the Kaaba in the light of jogging between Mount Safa and Mount Marwa. The spiritual journey known as Hajj boasts many benefits, including a powerful positive transformation that makes pilgrims more spiritual righteous, softer, and better human beings overall. Pilgrims who embark the journey of Hajj faithfully and sincerely are cleansed of all their previous sins, leaving them with a fresh start. Upon completion of Hajj, Muslims celebrate one of two Muslim holidays called Eid al-Abha. Muslims celebrate by praying to God and visiting family and friends to thank and praise God for all the blessings He has bestowed upon them. Our Prophet narrated, whoever guides another to a good deed will get a reward similar to the one who performs it. So please like, subscribe, and share this video. Assalamu alaikum.